Hi, I'm Simon Baker, and today I had the pleasure of chatting with uh, Georg Schmiel, the Executive Chairman of Dui IQI, based out of Malaysia. Georg is the former CFO of the REA Group, a uh, former Director of iProperty. Um, he is the current Executive Chairman of uh, Dui, uh, Chairman of uh, iCar Asia. He's been the former CEO of um, LJ Hooker in Australia. So Georg has uh, many, many, many years of experience on both sides of the fence from both the advertising perspective and also from the um, running of a real estate agency perspective. I hope you enjoy this podcast. Thank you for joining us, Georg, um, on this podcast. Um, what, what I'd like to, to cover off today is probably three or four things. Um, one is what Dui does because I think you know, finding out a lot more about what you're doing is important. The second is how's the coronavirus impacted business for you and, 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 and the markets, particularly the Chinese markets that you're operating in. Because I think getting your perspective as you're a lot closer than, than many, other, many of us are to what's happening. Is it truly rebounding and, and, and so on? Uh, and then I think the third is sort of what, what initiatives you've taken internally to, to, to address. And I think we should really chat about um, working from home because you've got a very large team and and how how you've really um, addressed that issue mm -hmm. of how do I how do I work from home in a very um, constructive manner and then I think uh, the fourth thing is well what what does the post UI the post UI the post coronavirus world look like um, and 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 how do you position yourself for that that uh, that market yeah. so I think that, that's that's what I think would be really fun for us to to, to walk through and have a have a yes. just a chat about it. it's just a chat right as, as we're going through no yeah. no things but so so i think the first starting point is is do i mean I, I okay so i remember do i from way back when when two guys who, who used to work for me at rea simon and um and uh and uh, andrew simon and andrew set up uh do i based out of china to to you know, to do to basically take uh foreign properties into china what what has happened since since those days um Quite a bit has happened uh, since those days. Um, so the, the, the business has grown uh, over the years and has established itself as the number one Chinese uh, marketplace for overseas properties. So if you're in China and you're looking to buy outside of China, it's the number one address uh, for that. Uh, and uh, five months ago, this business merged with another business, which is called IQI. That's why it's true IQI. And uh, IQI is the number one project marketing, which means project sales uh, uh, agency across uh, Southeast Asia and also uh, with offices in Middle East, uh, Canada and Australia. And the reason for the merger uh, was uh, threefold. On the one side, what we wanted to do is to capture the whole value chain from advertising over the sale, as well as to the post-sale service, i.e. property management, and uh, other uh, bits and pieces. The second reason was uh, that uh, from a pure synergistic uh, point of view, bringing those two businesses together, there were uh, quite significant synergies being, uh, being able to uh, generate it. And uh, these synergies uh, are in twofold. One is revenue synergies, uh, simply by, uh, because the market, the demand of Chinese buyers had shifted towards Southeast Asia. Uh, over the years uh, and the demand for, for Asian properties in general uh, has become more than half of uh, the demand which uh, Chuai gets. Uh, so getting together with someone who represents Asian markets uh, was a perfect match. And then on the other side, which is, which is not as relevant, uh, are, are cost synergies. I mean, we could bring the businesses together and, and have a few cost synergies, but the, probably 90% of the synergies are all uh, revenue synergies and, uh, so, and, and, and and the last part was really we were able to combine uh, very like-minded uh, people so we, we knew the the IKI guys for a period of at least four years um, uh, saw their their model uh, evolve and, uh, and and it was a perfect match not just from a pure financial synergistic point of view but also from a pure what we want to achieve and what we want to achieve is literally is making Asian buyers global residents. So not just China, but all of Asia, global residents. Global residents predominantly in new uh, properties because that's the preferred uh, asset class, but we also do uh, secondary sales, which 
once you start doing primary sales, you automatically get uh, offered mm. secondary sales as well as property rentals. Okay, so <clears throat> if I'm a real estate agent sitting in um, Australia, for example, I've got some properties uh, that the Asian buyer would like. I advertise them on GUI. I basically pay a fee. I advertise them on GUI. Do I get leads directly to me or what's, what's the role of the IQI bit? In, in all this, how does that, uh, I mean, how do the two work together? I mean, you, you, there are various ways. One is uh, um, you're an agent with properties, you advertise on Chuai, you put the listings mm -hmm. up, you get leads. Uh, but uh, let's say if you're a developer client, uh, you come to, uh, to IQI and you say, can you help me? And, and, and for developers, uh, help is much more than just leads, it's, it's really results. And as Chuai IQI, we can deliver results. Uh, so we, we definitely service existing agents uh, and project marketing companies all around the world and, and provide them with leads because literally the consumers uh, also choose uh, where they want to go. But then on the other side, uh, for, for our own uh, type of projects, which we, our own developments, which, which are, um, we've signed up, uh, we also advertise those on the site. What we make sure is, is, is that we really uh, advertise high quality uh, product because if you do the whole thing of advertising sale and after service you want to make sure it's quality right so basically either an agent comes direct to you to you advertisers gets leads uh, or um, a develop you work with a developer somewhere in the world to get to the market and then your team is that sort of translation team it's either automatic translation or person-based translation that can really help a, 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 an Asian buyer deal with non whatever the language they speak with it with a, with another language and you're helping that really that's that cross border absolutely transaction. Right. That's absolutely right. These are okay. the two main models, and then there's a new one in the middle which is called affiliates, uh, where we allow agents uh, to brand themselves for project sales as uh, uh, powered by Chuai IQR, being an affiliate, meaning uh, they can join a network. Uh, and uh, become part of the greater uh, Chuba IQI network and promote uh, their own properties or get a head start when entering into project sales. Okay, so coronavirus, um, clearly based in Asia, um, it's had a, you know, a, 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 a major impact, it's had a major impact everywhere. What, what, can you sort of tell me what's, what's been the impact of the coronavirus and what are you starting to see in terms of things turning around? Yes, so what we have seen is uh, uh, given that uh, uh, part of our business is obviously uh, located in China, uh, so we got used to uh, working from home and, and all the other uh, side effects of, of uh, corona, uh, the corona pandemic uh, fairly early, uh, already in, in, in January and February. We as business were used to uh, working from home and used to using uh, Zoom and other uh, communication platforms like WeChat and WeChat Work. Uh, to interact uh, we, because we were spread around the world and our head offices were in Shanghai and in Hong Kong uh, already. So, so we got hit uh, first there. Uh, and during that time, uh, it proved quite uh, uh, positive that uh, we targeted not just the Chinese market, but the wider Asian market. So therefore we had a kind of a slight risk diversification when it comes to the demand, but there wasn't that much demand coming from China initially we had demand from other parts in the world which wasn't affected, weren't affected by the coronavirus. Then eventually people who were working from home started to use the internet more and more and more and more and more inquiries uh, were coming in also from China. Then China came back and now Asia and the rest of the world is in uh, various degrees of uh, lockdown and now we're repeating the same thing the other way around. And now we have uh, Chinese demand uh, but, uh, but, but other markets are, are, are a bit slower. Now, well, this is probably the, 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 the more interesting part because for the first part, we were pretty much already online. I mean, the only thing we had to literally end uh, doing is, is, is property expos, uh, but this was a small part of our business. We just shifted them online. So doing property seminars or live shows for half a day online on, on Zoom. When it comes now to the business in, in, in more in Southeast Asia and the Middle East, uh, where there's uh, physical uh, contact uh, between the buyers and, and, and the agents, uh, what we did is uh, we literally pushed ahead uh, 
uh, with the with the uh, online migration uh, very much uh, through this time. So on the one side, we used our existing online assets, online advertising, online expos. And on, on top of that, uh, we made a much, much greater use and almost made it mandatory for people to use virtual tours uh, and uh, to also uh, uh, like try to close the deal completely online. I mean, initially it felt a bit daunting or haunting uh, uh, when, we, when we started that process uh, a few weeks ago, but then people started to close deals like 11 deals a day and so on online. Uh, and we realized that actually from a technology point of view, it's not that much required. I mean, we can always do better, but you need to start and with the existing technology, there's actually everything in place uh, to do a transaction from the advertising to the closing. And, uh, and if I think of last week, last week we were uh, almost there at normal levels of sales. So what we haven't experienced yet is a real decline in our business. And I don't think it will happen because now the demand from China is really uh, going up strongly. Uh, but what it has clearly made is it made clear a uh, online is no longer an option. It's absolutely mandatory. Number two is uh, you need to provide a bit more than just a lead because uh, if you give a lead to someone who's working from home and they don't have the infrastructure in place, they can't really do that much with it. So we have to it, it really lifts up agents who are more online uh, uh, like oriented and and uh, we don't need blockchain yet i mean if we had blockchain and all the other nice uh, pieces to make processes uh, smoother it would be even better but what i'm saying is right now we can already do business okay i just want to go back a little bit um we hear a lot of uh, commentary uh, coming out from the west that that China has turned around and that, that's, that uh, even internally sales are coming back to normal. Are you seeing that as well? Uh, yes, we are seeing it as well. I mean, on the one side, I mean, the first level of how we see it is everybody is back in their offices and, oper uh, and operating and the domestic sales are, are, are really back. Uh, so, I mean, um, for example, sales vol volumes in, 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 in China, in the last uh, month of, of March, were already three times higher than the sales volumes in February, and are now trending at higher than they were in the quarter last quarter of last year, like in quarter four of 2019. Uh, we also know of, I mean, there's a couple of great examples how uh, how hot the market is uh, right now. I mean, there's a project in, in Wuzhong, uh, 250 million US dollar project, uh, which sold uh, within one minute online so within one minute all the registration come in because if you think about what is really an online purchase all you need to do is is have a have a, have a binding agreement in place that you're going to buy that property and you make regular payments as the project uh, uh, progresses and 90% uh, of it was sold within an hour and it's now completely sold and uh, there's 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 many 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 other examples not just in the property sector and that's important it can't be just the property sector it needs to be the industry the underlying industry etc it needs to needs to come back now we do believe that the recovery will be one off uh, it will it will uh, improve and then it will slow down a bit and then it will improve further i mean it is not a financial crisis it's a, it's a, it's a crisis which which stems from the fact that people cannot uh, uh, produce or kind of go go follow their normal uh, profession, and uh, there's a lot of funds out there in uh, in the markets waiting uh, for the market to come back and to be invested in the companies who are literally getting through and, and providing the new solution which is required. So when we get out of that, Simon, I think uh, one thing will happen is I mean some things will get back to where they were, but I do believe other things will have changed uh, quite a bit. I mean, everybody's, most people are now, not everybody, but most people should be completely familiar with video conferencing. Like, yes, I know it's not a big thing, but it's a massive change. It's a massive change from sending SMSs or, or calling people, which is still quite popular in Australia. So this video conferencing is, is a completely new concept because it allows uh, to do so much more. And now people are getting also more and more used when they're at home with other solutions and uh, little pieces of the puzzle uh, to, to uh, this uh, new world. So it's kind of this pandemic, the 
the, 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 the side effect of it is it has really accelerated the disruption. Okay, so disruption, but also creating a new work environment. The, yes. um, one of the other things that you talked about before was about closing deals online. Can you talk more about how that occurs? So if, I, if I'm a buyer and I'm talking to you as IQI or as an agent, I assume this is mostly as the IQI side you're talking about closing deals. Yes. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm literally looking at a new development online. I'm uh, liking what I see. Do I complete contracts and put a deposit down? Is it just asking the bank to transfer money? What is it? What's, what's behind that? What's behind it is, I mean, you look at it, you contact me in uh, our market is quite popular to either use WhatsApp or, or WeChat uh, uh, to, to, to have the interaction. Uh, I talk you through, I send you via these channels all the relevant documentation and so on. Uh, you print it, sign it, scan it, send it through. Uh, I mean, there's also mail uh, still working, but, uh, and then you make a down payment. And I mean, all of those uh, uh, steps in the process are, are possible without any physical interaction. I mean, what is important is uh, that you're interacting with a counterpart who is trustworthy, who provides a good quality uh, uh, development. And, uh, and uh, uh, most other pieces are, are, are literally already in place. I mean, payment, online payments, uh, widget pay, Alipay, et cetera, are very, very common in, in, in our markets now. Uh, so, so it is, uh, what is proving now is that the infrastructure, which was put in place over the last probably 10 years, uh, which is one step further than in, in, in other markets, because it came in a bit later of advertising, selling and fulfilling, which was put in place by the Alibabas of the world and so on, has really educated and others, has educated the market that end-to-end -end transactions are possible online and now property which up to now wasn't as much uh, done online, but if you don't have a choice, you might already do it online and then people realize it's actually not that difficult. And don't forget, we are in new project sales, uh, mostly so in new project sales, sometimes the property is not even completed or is not even built. So, so it's, it's your buying of the plan. So therefore, uh, 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 from that perspective, a physical visit of the site is sometimes also not required. Also, given you're dealing with developer clients uh, who have a high number of similar type of units in, 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 in a property, uh, there's far more budget available for intelligent advertising, for virtual tours, and so on. Okay, so it sounds, so if, if, I, if I'm getting this right, you said you're having um, strong growth year on year. Um, uh, you know, GUI uh, is doing very well. Um, GUI IQI is doing very well. Yes, and, right. and, 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 given, and given the social distancing requirements and lockdown and, and, and you're in Malaysia, so I assume you're still in uh, lockdown there. Um, I am. Is it, is, it, is it true to say that almost all your sales are now online? Yes, uh, for, for, for those markets where there's uh, uh, a lockdown, obviously we, we also have, uh, I mean, Thailand hadn't been in lockdown to that extent yet, but it's now also in, 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 in lockdown. When it comes to Malaysia, it's all uh, on, Malaysia is really in, in, in stage four, as they call it, mm -hmm. type of lockdown. Uh, and uh, um, so Thailand has now also gone into a stronger uh, level of, uh, of, of lockdown. So yes, most of the sales are online. I mean, Australia, uh, we also have operations in Australia. I mean, they have also now gone into, on, into lockdown, so yes. So more and more will be online. And interesting enough, they will learn from all the countries already in lockdown because in the end, it's not that different country by country. Yeah. It's the same so, process. So what does this mean for real estate? You know, if I was a real estate agent operating anywhere in the world and I had you know, a relatively old model, a lot of face-to-face -face telephone calls, yeah, some of it's automated using CRM systems and so on. How, what's, what's the future look like for me? Do I have to innovate to stay relevant um, or, or, or am I, you know, I can go back to my old ways? I think, I mean, you, you definitely have to be open to new ideas, whether you yourself uh, have to innovate or whether you join one of the uh, more modern groups like a true IQI uh, and, and, and then benefit from the technology is, is, is a different question, but uh, uh, 
Um, certainly, uh, what we have also seen is, is a strong increase in numbers of applications of people wanting to join, uh, which is a common thing, uh, by the way, during any, any crisis that during a crisis, the independent agents use tend to more and more uh, go towards a, uh, a larger group uh, of, of any sorts. The difference is now they're not joining a larger group just for the belief, but they're joining it for the technology. That's the big difference. So it's, it's a bit like, you know, when there's a crisis, many people run to church. Church is more about belief. We are really about online technology, if you allow me this kind of comparison. I, I, will, I will allow you the comparison. Uh, we won't edit it. We, we won't cut it <laughs> in that in the process. So, so what what happens then to those who don't innovate? To those who don't adopt the new way? Do they just end up servicing a smaller and smaller group of um, uh, customers out there? You know, buyers. Yeah. The, the... I do believe that there will be over time less and less agents and and. Less and less agent doesn't mean everyone is impacted the same way. It's not doesn't mean that everybody loses a uh, business. Some people might even grow it during a contraction period if they have an offering which is which is really suited uh, for what is required. And um, from my perspective, um, this is what's going to happen. Uh, if you think of markets like highly inefficient property markets like the US and so on, we have hundreds of thousands of agents eventually technology will reduce uh, those number of agents to similar levels of productivity which you have uh, around the world. I mean, in, in, in places like Southeast Asia or Asia uh, in general, there's also uh, quite a lot of agents out there. Uh, some of them are part-time, but what online will do is make the profession far more uh, solid uh, because with online productivity will rise, uh, databases, all these uh, type of things uh, will make a massive difference. Uh, so from that perspective, I would say we will see a stronger real estate industry come out. We will see a more effective and more productive real estate industry come out of this, uh, uh, out of this uh, pandemic. Okay. And then what, what, what segments of the market do you think are best suited for a uh, online remote working world? If we, if we break the market into rentals, new home sales, established home sales, and then I'll put the, the fourth bucket is ancillary services, mortgages, notaries, insurance, and so on. At which, if you were to rate them from the, the most online friendly to the least online friendly, what would it be? And what, what are the challenges mm -hmm. for each of them? I would say all of them are pretty much candidates for a, a stronger penetration in online. Uh, when it comes to the, um, I mean, they all require slightly different things. When you start with the new uh, project sales, uh, where it's a, a question about uh, for, for a developer really selling a high volume of stock in a, in a, in a reasonable uh, time, in a short period of time, a high volume of stock at a fixed price. Um, here, technology can help all the way from building the right stock, uh, which is, uh, which is uh, relevant based on where the demand is, and only online tells you where the demand is, to really targeting the right uh, uh, bias uh, with, with data again, so you don't do a carpet bombing kind of uh, mm -hmm. advertising approach, but you really pinpoint uh, to really selling uh, more effectively and also the, the, the after sales. So for those ones, technology really makes a massive difference and reduces capital costs and, uh, and, and, and really gets results. For the secondary market, uh, where it's more about you have a property and you want to maximize the value for that property. It's not less a volume game, it's more a maximization game in the property price. I mean, technology gives a lot of insights to the, to the, to the, to the vendor uh, in terms of uh, what they're looking for and, and uh, what people are looking for, what the little tweaks are, how you can get a better value out of your property, what additional features uh, you might consider and how you advertise and also if and which agent uh, you choose uh, to market your properties and which which advertising channels. And when it comes to renting, I mean, renting is is an interesting one because when it comes to renting, technology is really really important because in many places property management is very much run as uh, as, as as a way of like uh, being a high maintenance type of uh, uh, um, function where for every little thing the property manager involves like tradespeople and so on. And there's not really much, you know, 
uh, knowledge and uh, techniques out there to really maximize the value of a property which people have bought as an investment property. So to yep. be really a wealth manager, to really improve the value of that property because whatever happens, I mean, I had it uh, with, with property of mine, a letterbox dropped, uh, broke uh, and agents suggest to send a tradesperson. Then next day this breaks, again, tradesperson. And you know how expensive tradespeople are in, in Australia, yes. for example, and uh, it's not the right approach because the letterbox, the easiest to say, to the tenant buying the letterbox and I give you the money and maybe even $50 on top of it and I save a lot of money. These are the things where technology can really help saying, okay, what is the issue? What is the best uh, solution for it, et cetera, et cetera. Now, when there's no real need, people don't do it. But now with the pandemic, there's a real need and there's a real, real, uh, there's not an option. If you cannot, I mean, my radius is inside the house and with a face mask, just across the road uh, for shopping, but on my own. That's the only things I can do for the last uh, 21 days. So if I want to buy a property, I have no choice and I will do it online. Yes. Or if I want to sell something. And that's, yeah. that's the key thing. This not having a choice makes it mandatory, brings the big change. And then people realize, even if they know, they really realize it's so much better. It's so much easier. Why yeah. did I not do it earlier? Because that's what you hear often. Why didn't I do it earlier? If you think back to when you uh, transformed the Australian uh, classified uh, area and, and, and you moved from print to online, people were still doing print and they said, oh, it's for my own branding and so on. But in the end, yes. it, didn't really, it wasn't that effective. But eventually, you know, critical mass was reached and then there was no uh, holding back and certainly the global financial crisis and a few other things had accelerated that process. Yeah, I agree. I agree that... Uh... Amazing when uh, you go through a period of crisis and a period of uh, pain, you yeah. get very, very used to working in a very different way. And then what was uncomfortable becomes comfortable and becomes the new normal. And uh, I think the challenge Absolutely. for the industry is, is, is to, to keep accelerating and adopting technologies rather than to fall back into old habits and almost drag everyone backwards. And I think, I think the interesting thing around this is going to be that the, the, con, the consumer side, where it's the renter, the landlord, the, the buyer, the seller, will now demand more and more of an electronic online relationship yes. Because, yes. because we're going to be comfortable with doing most of our work at home. I had a good chat yesterday with a guy from Goldman Sachs and he said, I'm actually really enjoying working from home and after this is all over, I'm going to work from home two days a week because I'm so much more productive in that process. I agree. I think, I think that's an important one. The, the boundary between work and home and so on is now completely gone. And, uh, and yes, it, it, it creates a new work-life experience. I agree. Very, very different when you're stuck in lockdown with three teenagers. Very different work-life <laughs> experience. <laughs> anyway, Gil, thank you. Thank you very much for taking the time to chat. Um, all the way from Malaysia. Thank you, so Simon. So uh, it's exciting okay. times. And uh, I was actually reflecting. This is funny. I was Last night when I was uh, when nodding up the sense going, what a crazy 24, 48 hours I've had where I've had phone calls with, um, or video conferences with Malaysia, Ukraine, Australia, mm -hmm. Russia, Brazil. Um, where else was it? Um, Turkey. And there was somewhere else. I can't remember what it is now. Uh, oh, Madrid, Spain, of course. And I'm going... That's 24 hours. That's like, you know, 24 to 48 hours. I could, you could never fly that distance to go meet people face to face. Yet, super productive meetings, very yeah. focused. Yeah. Um, people have developed a very good, um, what do you call it, uh, Zoom etiquette. Okay, in terms of a bit of banter up front, everyone then focuses straight in. Um, very, very good. And what I've noticed is that people, especially when you've got larger groups, people are starting to really respect letting someone talk, not over talking people. Um, and getting that, so I think I think there's a degree of a lot of um, uh, good etiquette that's coming out of this whole uh, move you've, to online. You've mentioned an important point because that's what they've also realised in schooling, in homeschooling, that students act far more equal uh, and and uh, rather than being in a classroom, uh, so slightly more mature, and 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 those people who often get talked over, like finally get get their spot to, to, to talk because we're all in one equal sized box on the screen. 
so, so it's, yes. it's, it's, it's kind of, no, seriously, it's kind of an interesting one, uh, uh, how technology puts us into our place. Yes. And on that note, thank you very much, Gil. On that note. <laughs>